And I think the way this can apply for business is the mindset of like go big or go home forget about rejection if you want to get more clients it really is a numbers game sure you have to learn how to sell better but in the end the numbers game matters as well hey there i'm charlie your online business manager and wordpress expert my goal is to assist small to medium business owners build their businesses with a focus on using the internet and online technologies in an appropriate and cost-effective manner People hire me to take the stress out of managing their businesses and allow themselves to focus on what they do best. Today, I'm talking to Annie Margarita Yang, or Annie, the bestseller of the five-day job search. She's passionate about empowering individuals, especially those who may be running their businesses while seeking career advancement, a topic that aligns um, really well with what I'm doing here on my podcast. So I was really keen to have a chat to Annie. So Annie, welcome. Thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate you coming along. Charlie, thanks for having me. Fantastic. Look, honestly, um, now if I could get you, I've given people a, a rough idea of who you are, but if you could just give us the helicopter view of who Annie is, how you came to be where you're at, um, and then we can talk about how businesses can take the information that you've been sharing and what it all means to them. Yeah, basically, my story is that I didn't go straight to college after high school, and I worked a whole string of minimum wage jobs. And even after I got a college degree, a bachelor's degree in communications, I was working at Domino's Pizza for seven fifty an hour. So everyone's telling me that's the golden ticket, but it didn't turn out that way. And so when I moved from Texas to Boston, I said, you know, I have a new life here. Nobody knows who I am. And I really don't care what people think or say about me. And people might say, you're not qualified to work in accounting because you don't have an accounting degree, but I don't care, right? <laughs> I'm personally good with my own money in our personal finances. Very, very good at budgeting and cash flow. So if I can do it for myself, I think I can do it for a business. So I started applying to 50 accounting jobs a day, and then I got an offer by the end of the week. And for three different job searches, on the third search, I got an offer in only five days in accounting, and that's with a recruiter telling me that I'm not qualified. So at that point, I realized there must be something I'm doing right. And I realized I'm really good at personally branding myself, which is why I'm given opportunities all the time. And I figured, you know, I can help people who either need a job, but since your audience are business owners, they can use this as well for their business so that they can personally brand themselves, especially if they're in a service-based business. You know, that that's an amazing thing. And I'm so glad you kind of said that about your personal branding, but it's about my degree doesn't give me that. You're right. It doesn't. What your degree gives you is the ability to learn the ability to um, go and find out and do some research and, and learn about doing things. That, that's one thing that people forget about and getting the degree. It's not just what the degree is in. Um, and the fact that you actually went out and said, well, I can do this. Let me, let, sh let me show you how I can do this is amazing. So um, talk, let's talk a little bit about personal branding and what that means, um, what it means to you and how, how that might apply to uh, our business. Yeah, so what people don't realize is that everyone already has a personal brand. If you read any branding book, when they talk about branding, um, a brand is basically what other people think of you. It's their perception, their judgment, and their evaluations of you. So you don't actually control your brand. You get to curate what people see so that you control what they see, but then they will form their opinion based on what they see, right? So if you post online, let's say all the things that you ate, throughout the week, <laughs> you have that, like, I love to eat food brand, right? Or if you're always posting about your kids, I have kids brand, right? Or you sell houses. If you just, if you're in real estate and you just keep selling houses and that's all you post online, people see you as the I sell houses guy, right? Or if you're, you're not even on the internet, you have no social media profiles and you're at a party and someone asks you, Hey, can we connect on Facebook? And you're just like, I have nothing, <laughs> no social media at all. They kind of like perceive you as you like, I'm stuck in 2005, right? So <laughs> you already have a brand. <laughs> the question is, have you curated it to your benefit, especially in positioning yourself as an expert in your industry? Okay, so let, let's dig down into that because I absolutely love it. So I, I post a lot of um, nature photos. I'm going to do a lot of walking since I've started on my um, fitness journey and getting my health back. 
I get out in nature a lot. So I get a lot of nature photos. And that's what you see a lot on my social media at the moment is um, the places I visit and the, and the beautiful landscapes and scenery I see. So I guess I'm the scenery chick. <laughs> but let's talk about that. So you've got your personal brand and then you've got your business brand. And uh, are they the same? Are they different? How does that work? I think these days they're one and the same because out of the branding books that I did read, um, it, it said, you know what's an interesting, very interesting concept? Those big Fortune 500 companies like Coca-Cola that everyone knows and loves, right? Um, actually, they're trying to be human. They're trying to cater and appeal to the human emotion with like Nike, just do it, right? That kind of inspiration. And then um, Steve Jobs, it's all about like moving it into the future with technology and creativity, right? Actually, those are trying to invoke feelings in you as a person. So we are actually naturally our person, like our individual human, we are actually naturally a brand. It is those big Fortune 5 companies, like they're trying to copy us. We're not replaceable. Like we naturally can make someone feel upset or happy without even realizing it, right? We naturally have that. It's the brands that we know today, those big companies that are trying to copy us. Okay, so that actually comes back to one of the inspirations that if it hasn't gone out today that I've, I've been doing, um, people buy from people and it doesn't matter they don't buy from your company no, okay yes they buy from your company they'll come back and buy from your company but they're looking for the people behind your company do, do your values align with mine are you someone that i think i can actually deal with do i do i hate you do i love you do i like you um so i i would agree that, that that's something that coke and all the rest do try to do um and yeah, so you think our personal brand and our business brand are similar, the same? I think a personal brand is actually more powerful than a business brand, actually. Okay, it's so actually how then does that... more powerful than the business, yeah. Okay, so how then um, do business owners capitalize on that, given that, you know, you've got your personal, you've got your personal brand? And you've got your business brand and you're out there trying to market your business and get business in and i'm, I'm going to call it the job search for your business because you're always looking for jobs for your business whether um you, you spoke about service-based businesses specifically but even product-based businesses there's they're in the business of providing something that's going to um give benefit to a customer how do you then um, tie your personal branding in with your business branding? How do you separate them out so that you can walk away from the business and you're not actually part of the business for a little bit and just, I am my own person, I have my own identity here separate from my business. How, how does that all work? I think you need to have a face for your business, right? Like, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Ryan Sirhant, but he's like big in real estate and he does like a lot of YouTube videos in real estate in New York City. Like, oh, I sold this million dollar house or something like that. But like, he also has like a whole team of other real estate agents working under him, but he's the face of the business. So there's, there's that. Like, so even if you own like, let's say a pool company or a landscaping company, which is not normally associated with having a brand, you can still build a brand if you're the owner and have your face to it, right? Because you as a person, you have your own belief systems, you have your own values, right? So if you're online and you're you're talking to potential customers about like what they should do in their um with their landscaping, what products do you recommend? How do you um what do you recommend people do uh when you're not around to pro provide the work, right? Like let's say like the maintenance work in between when you're not there like what do you recommend they do things like that that you can give that information to potential customers like that can still be your face for the brand does that make sense that that is a wonderful answer and it really makes things a lot clearer so yeah you become the face of your business basically yes um, and just remember that people buy from people i mean it, your business can be massive um I mean, it might not be Coca-Cola size massive, but it can be massive. And people will still think of it as Charlie's business or um, Annie's business. Uh, and I, yeah, I think, I think you're entirely correct. But that also then means that what you're posting on a personal level and your own personal profile, no matter how much you keep that separate, you still have to think about how is this going to get 
perceived by people who might find me and look me up and see what I actually stand for, right? Yeah, well, that that happens to in everyone. That's for everyone. It's not just for business owners. I mean, look at job seekers who say, oh, but my personal Facebook has nothing to do with how well I am at my job, right? But if a employer tries to check you out before you get an interview and they find your personal Facebook, right, just to look first, and then they see all these crazy, hateful things about transgender, you know, it's, they're not they're probably not going to give you an interview, well, right? So this, this applies to everybody, not just business. So I think everybody these days, they have to be careful what they say, because um, online social media is basically just this gigantic public town hall that's on a global scale. It's almost like, imagine we're back in like the 1700s where people actually had like a public square. Right. And they convened publicly every week uh, to discuss the issues in the town and complain and stuff like imagine it's like that, basically, but just global. Yeah. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to point out that, you know, if you're posting things on social media like, um, well, I decided I didn't want to go into work today, so I didn't go and I'm having the day off. But my boss doesn't know. Your next boss is going to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try to start wondering about is this the person I want to have in my business? So I get, I want to have is this the is this the ethos I want to actually have? And I mean, yeah, we're making a joke of that. And if every how it works for a business, if I was posting that I hate my customers, my customers are really hard. I really hate my life at the moment. It's really bad. It's really tough, and there's no money coming in, and no woe is me a customer who comes along no matter how much i have separated out my personal and my business profile and i have they can still find me and they can still look at the things i'm like I, I stuff I got down, but they can still look at things and they can say yeah this is someone i want to work with this is a, a, a positive upbeat woman who practices what she preaches in her personal life as well as her um business life this is someone i want to work with or actually i really don't like what she stands i'm going to go and do with her business and that's okay too. That's, fine. that's the way it goes but it is something important to remember right that you, you, your brands are tied together if you're running a business whatever you do in a public forum is going to be seen by the public and going to be judged by the public. That's right. That's right. And I, I, there was something earlier you said about like, well, if I want to work with Charlie and Charlie has multiple businesses, actually reminded me of Donald Trump. Now we have like half, half the country in the United States loves him and the other half hates him. Right. But, you know, he has so many businesses, especially with the name Trump attached to the business, Trump University, Trump Hotel, you know, Trump he Tower. The like, the man all is the the, brand. And, you know, he is the personal face to his business, right? He has the personal brand and then he has all of these businesses with his name attached to it. I think, uh, you know, as much as people hate him and will criticize him, he is like the epitome of this example of like being the face of your brand, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, love or hate him. You look at what he's done. The man is making money. Um, right. And he's got a lot of businesses and he employs a lot of people to run those businesses. Um He's doing something right. <laughs> Maybe we need to copy something business. that he's doing. <laughs> In business, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's doing something right somewhere. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, you know, and Trump, look, Trump's not the only one. There's been several um, examples of that, of people who have branded their businesses with their own face. Um, Rich Branson, for example. Virgin, yeah, that's right. Virgin, Virgin Industries, or whatever, whatever his umbrella company is. Richard Branson is another one. He, he's he, he, some of his Virgin, and most people think Richard Branson, even though he may not be involved in some of those right now. Um, but it's just that's what he's done. Okay, so you mentioned, and I want to come back to it. You put out a lot of job applications, and you had a job offer within a week. That's right. Um, despite being told that you weren't the right candidate and you weren't going to get any of these offers. Can you tell me why you think that happened? And let's see what the analogy is then for a business owner in terms of um, how, how that might apply for a business owner. Uh, one of the things that I did very different from other people is I applied to 50 jobs a day and I said, I'm not going to stop applying to 50 jobs a day unless I actually have a written offer that I've accepted. 
So like, even if I have an interview, I'm still going to apply to 50 jobs a day on the day of the interview. So unless it's like actually written and all set, I don't consider that as an offer. Like simply a phone call to get an interview doesn't count for me, right? I'm just gonna keep on going. Um, and I think the way this can apply for business is a mindset of like, go big or go home, forget about rejection. If you wanna get more clients, it really is a numbers game. Sure, you have to learn how to sell better, but in the end, the numbers game matters as well. Like for example, um, I wrote the five day job search book, right? Then it's time to start marketing and promoting the book. So I said, I'm gonna get on 500 podcasts. How will I get booked on 500 podcasts? Well, if I reach out to 5,000 podcasts and 10% of them say yes, then I'll be on 500 shows. Now, after I started getting booked on shows, I realized that is a lot of work. So what happened was I ended up reaching out to 514 and then I got, I got booked on 130. Which is still pretty good, you know. I found that's out other offers. That's a massive number. That's a lot. That's a lot. Of time. Talking, I'm Annie. spending a lot of time in it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, the numbers game it, it applies in everything you do. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, I'm actually gonna just to drill down on that one a little because um, that's what a lot of businesses forget, and service businesses are actually a little more difficult. And I'll come back to why I said that in a minute. You've got to fill that funnel. I mean, you've got to talk about your sales funnel all the time. And I have seen the stuff going through on my social media and all the advertising coming through. You don't need to worry about your funnel. You just need this one technique. You need to worry about your funnel, guys. You need to have opportunities coming into the top of that funnel that you are responding to, um, qualifying out, qualifying in, making sure that you've got stuff sitting there ready to go ready for the next phase before you take before you stop looking for new work you don't ever stop looking for new work because your work will dry up eventually the work you're doing today isn't going to be forever even if you've got recurring contracts with people you need to have something that just keeps the business turning over um, i speak a little bit about if you are not growing, you are stagnating. Um, and I may say that again and again and again. Even if you aren't stagnating in your business, even if your business sits here on this line, everything around you is moving, which means that that line is getting further and further behind. So if you are not growing, you are stagnating and you need to bear that in mind. So what Annie just suggested or did is exactly what we as business owners should be doing. We should be out there looking for opportunities all the time we should be applying for opportunities all the time we should be getting our proposals out there we should be putting um feelers out and saying hey is this something you're interested in can we have a chat can we you know would you like to know more because until you get that contract signed and you start the work in fact until you get paid for the work in most cases in in a services based industry you don't have the work you, you just don't have it. So you need to make sure you've got something coming through. Now, I did say it's a little more difficult for services-based businesses. Um, the thing that I find is that I get so busy delivering that work that I forget to fill my phone. <laughs> now I get to the end of that work and go, oops, I don't have anything to start next. So what am I going to do for the next three or four weeks? The next three or four weeks is out there doing the job search, doing the business search, doing the work search. So I, I have to keep that moving. Um, I think you've, that's exactly what you were just saying, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you get into that feast or famine cycle. You have to keep bringing in more clients in the pipeline. Yeah. yeah so you basically, you didn't take the job off. You didn't stop applying for jobs until you had a signed contract in your hand and a start date. Yeah, that's right. Fantastic. Awesome. Um, now, how did you go out and find all those jobs? Because that's the hard part, I think. It's like, I mean, no, the hard part is applying for them, but finding them's work too. No, finding them is easy as well. <laughs> the hard part is all <laughs> actually in the front loading work of writing the resume and making your LinkedIn profile look stellar. That is the hardest part. Uh, but beyond that, finding them, you're on like these job board sites where nowadays you can upload your resume and then you hit the easy apply button, which takes only five seconds. So, you know, you just type into the search bar. What are you looking for? Oh, bookkeeper job listing. OK, and then <laughs> apply, 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 apply. <laughs> so, you know, you just click the apply button for 50 jobs. 
um, that's probably, even if you took one minute each, that's, that's only a 50 minute task. I think that's reasonable. And other people thought, oh, you're crazy. I was like, do you don't have one hour to dedicate to your job search? <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. This is the thing that's going to put food on your table and spend the hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So you, you spoke about getting your resume and getting your LinkedIn profile looking stellar. Let's relate that back to um, businesses. So a business wouldn't necessarily have a resume, but they would have, um, I'm, I'm going to call it a brochure, um, something that they can send out and say, this is who we are. It's got your brand on it, your, your ethos and your mission and all of that stuff. And it's got an idea of your services. Um, and your LinkedIn profile, it's not just your LinkedIn profile, it's your Facebook and your Instagram and all of those other things where I know, I know, I'm, look, I'm an older, I'm an older business owner. Instagram, what the hell do I want to be on Instagram for? Isn't that just for photos? you got to be on Instagram because that's where the kids are these days. Trust me. Um, <laughs> no, no, actually, they're on TikTok. <laughs> they're on TikTok. The, no, that's Talking the babies. <laughs> <laughs> no, kids are on what? Instagram, the babies are on <laughs> they're actually like hiring yeah. um, people actually getting their clients these days through tiktok so um it's it's I, horrifying to me i'm just gonna <laughs> it's interesting it's the new google that's how they search so i was taking an acting class about five months ago but it was a group class and i wanted to look for a private teacher actually and one of the students in the class in this group class said in the introduction that she had a private teacher so I, I asked her privately, I was like, oh, how did you manage to find your acting teacher? Because I looked everywhere on Google for a private acting teacher and I couldn't find a good one in Boston. And then she was like, oh yeah, I found her on TikTok. <laughs> so people are getting clients through through TikTok, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have heard that this is the case. I mean, I, I'd say it's the babies, the really, really, really young, young adults on TikTok. Kids are on Instagram. My salties are still on Facebook. Facebook's the thing to do. Um, but, and then there's LinkedIn as well for your business profile um, and your, your professional profile. The question I was where I was leading to with all of that was um, you did the easy apply. So did you actually, and I'm, it'll be interesting to see how this pans out, do you tailor your job application for the job that you've done? No, what I do is I tailor it for the title that I'm going for. So if you're applying to become a hotel manager, for example, you just write one highly tailored resume for the hotel manager position, and you just use the same one over and over again for all of the ones you're applying for. And um, what I do is I tell clients to use ChatGPT to analyze hotel manager positions. So what we do is like we'll type into google hotel manager job listing and open up 20 of them in a new tab and then we'll copy one listing from top to bottom and paste it into ChatGPT and say analyze this hotel manager job listing what is the employer looking for in their ideal candidate and then we'll do that 20 times so one for each listing and then um, we look at the 20 different analyses to see what is the trend what is the pattern across all of these listings so like do they say over and over again we need somebody who um who is willing to work on weekends right do we need somebody who has seven years of experience like over and over again it says that okay so um then you write the resume according to those patterns but you're not lying right you're not making stuff up if you have it right if you have the skills and qualifications you make sure it is mentioned on your resume and you make sure you use those exact keywords as well um but yeah other than that like that's that's what we do you just highly tailored resume ready to go so what i'm hearing you say is you might have several different resumes for different um niches within the role that you're looking for so if it was a uh services based um bookkeeper or accounting officer you'd have something that was specifically for services but if it was a product based or a fitness based you would you would have them tailored to that degree yeah, it's tailored for the title. I mean, this this is, I think, and it's the same in the business where it depends on who you're talking to. Like, let's say you're trying to sell tutoring services. I mean, you really have two people here, right? You have the student who you're actually trying to tutor, and then you have the parent you're trying to convince to open their wallet and pay, right? So um, on your website, like, 
for the copywriting, who are you really speaking to for the copywriting? Because you're going to stumble upon two people. One is the student who's like, oh, I need tutoring, but my parents aren't going to do the searching. I'll do the searching, right? And then they have to find someone who speaks to them in their age range. So the copy has to speak to them. But then they also have to have a copy that speaks to the parent in regards to like how this works, what are the logistics, how much money is it, you know, things that the student doesn't actually care about you trustworthy are you going to actually do the job you say you're going to do do you have the experience that you say that and can that, my son get an a basically <laughs> yeah so, so that's actually um fascinating and i think you can actually pull that back into your businesses really really easily as well and it's something that we, we talk about a lot actually is knowing who your tar target audience is and tailoring what you're doing to what your target audience is looking for so um i for me, I'm an online business manager. I specifically work with services-based businesses. Uh, normally, um, I'm going to say personal services-based businesses, virtual assistants. Um, I, I've picked up, as a result of that, I've picked up some um, disability support service businesses as well, who are looking for someone who can who can help them out. Um, I, I speak specifically, well, very well to women, unsurprisingly, not unfortunately, unsurprisingly. Um, and I, I've had to tailor my message over time and I had to tailor how I present myself to those specific audiences. And when I want to move that audience and go into go and target a different audience, I need a different set of copy. I need a different set of graphics. I need a different set of um, ways of doing things. The information I'm presenting is still the same. I'm just presenting it differently and I'm highlighting different parts of my abilities to speak to that person. So I think that that, that would be a similar thing. Yeah. Yes, that's very similar. Awesome. Now, can you talk a little bit about LinkedIn and how businesses can use LinkedIn? Because we spoke about, I, I don't, we, we, we can go into the other social media networks, but I think LinkedIn is a resource that people don't use enough businesses specifically don't use enough um, and I think that professionals don't necessarily use it in the best way for themselves either so let's talk about how you made that stellar LinkedIn profile which is the words I heard you use just now um, the things that you did uh, and did you were there any specific tools you had to use within LinkedIn or what did you do uh, the first thing I did was I noticed that the LinkedIn profiles that looked really good, they had a really nice profile picture. So I went and got a professional headshot done. I had to pay $600 for a photographer to do it. Yeah. But like you notice that, like if you go on like all of the, you know, really nice looking profiles, the first thing that stands out is they have a really nice looking picture. So you have to get a professional headshot taken. Um, just, just go on Google and search like professional headshot photographer near me. And then look through all the profiles to see uh, which one you like the best based on their portfolio. And then make sure when you actually go in to do the photo shoot, you, you, you look good, meaning like, 80% of the work to looking great in your picture is actually taken, uh, that's, that work is done before you even step into the studio, meaning you have to go get your hair done on the same day. Make sure you hire professional makeup artists to do your makeup because camera makeup is different from real life makeup. And a lot of women don't have the um, technique and skill set necessarily for camera makeup. Uh, make sure you have nice clothes to, to bring, right? Make sure you look good in your clothes. One thing you can do is you can, take a selfie or ask your friend to take a picture of you in the, all the clothes in your closet and see how well does it look in the picture on the iPhone. If it doesn't look good, it's not going to look good in the studio, right? So do all of this prep work to looking good and then the actual photo will come up nice as well. Awesome. So you, you, the first thing was your headshot. I, I have to agree. Um, I'm, don't look mine. Please don't look mine. Um, <laughs> but um, making sure that your graphics are good and your images are good is, is a big one because pe people will respond to the visual um, almost before they even realise that they're responding to anything else. Like it's just the way the brain is wired. So what else did you find? Another thing is the tagline. What's really boring is if you, let's say you have accounting manager at KPMG, that's like the default. They put your title and then at such and such company. So maybe uh, founder at your company name, right? Normally that would be the default, but you should actually change it to um, how you provide value to other people 
for and then insert type of clientele you serve here. Like for example, saving taxes for real estate investors is you know the benefit of saving taxes and then who are you helping real estate investors so if you just like follow that format um that speaks to your potential clientele more than if you just put your title and the company that you have awesome so you know i'm going to go and look at my LinkedIn profile after this and find me that up. so your tagline your image uh what about the layout of, um the, the horizontal so now you can play a little bit the layout that's a little more difficult though on linkedin isn't it um the layout isn't as important the next important thing is well there's two important things one is the banner and then the next thing is the bio so basically like the about about you the summary right um i used to think that i had to be super famous before i had one of those written about me and i thought like someone just writes them for you like maybe one day you just wake up and you're just so famous somebody knocks on your door and says let me write a bio for you because you're so amazing but actually no that's not how it works you have to like pay a copywriter maybe about 300 dollars to write the bio for you and they are the ones who look through all of the things that you've done and then they make you look amazing <laughs> so you need to uh somehow work on that right look amazing in your bio uh, one of the things i realized is um you know those like as seen on things like oh she's been seen on blah 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 like that's actually something you pay for you're not just like featured on abc or nbc cnbc or fox like you're you actually have to like pay for that you, you can easily go on brandfeatured.com for example and then well i'm sure in australia there's a different version of brandfeatured.com but you can just pay like 200 or 300 dollars for a press release and then they syndicate to all of those sites. And then now you can say, oh, I've been seen on ABC, CNBC, you know? <laughs> and that can be mentioned in right. your bio to make it look like you're so amazing to the point that you've been featured in the press. So you're not necessarily paying to appear on those places, you're paying to get the press release sent out to yeah. them and then get yourself booked. So you're paying to get yourself booked basically. And is that important, having that sort of credibility? That is important because a lot of people, they think simply being good at what you do is important, but it goes beyond that. I think there is some, um, if you if you ever took anthropology one-on-one -on -one in college, you'll learn that there's four forms of capital. There's financial capital, which everyone knows, it just means you have money. Um, there's cultural capital. Then there's social capital, which is basically who you know. That's why they say, oh, who you know is more important than what you know, right? And then there's the fourth one that I don't, re I don't remember. Um, no, the fourth one is the most important one that I'm talking about here is the symbolic capital. Basically, like it's what it represents. Symbolic meaning a symbol represents something, right? Uh, if, if you've, you've um, earned book awards, for example, or you've won like the best in the industry award for 2024, that's a form of symbolic capital. If you're a Nobel Peace Prize winner and you say, I won the Nobel Peace Prize, all of a sudden people are like, ooh, because of what the symbol of the Nobel Peace Prize represents, right? So, so that's important. So being seen on, you know, ABC, CNBC, all of that stuff is a form of symbolic capital. Awesome. Okay. So what we're talking about there is the credentialing. So um, it's also about working out what is specific to your industry. So um, I'm just trying to think what would be specific to my industry and I am completely blanking. Um, but you can, uh, let, no, 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 no. what you can do, right? Is there are business awards. So you're in business. So anyone who's listening, who's a business owner, you can go online and look for business awards in and then insert the city so like i would search business award massachusetts or a business award boston right and then for every single award out there apply to them <laughs> you know you don't know which ones you'll win but you control which ones you apply to and the more you apply to the more likely you are to win so i apply the same concept to being able to call myself best-selling and award-winning author See, there's symbolic capital to being able to call yourself a award-winning author. And so I applied to 50 book awards. So this was a $5,000 project for me, right? And then so far, so far out of the awards that came back, 
where they've announced the winners already, I've won six of them. So now I can say, oh, the five day job search has won six book awards and I'm a multi winning, you know, award winning well, author. Well, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, that's that's entirely correct. Um, I, I think where I was trying to get down is you can go a little bit further as well, and you can actually find things that are specific to your niche that have a symbolic um, importance to your niche that you can go out and get. And that's something that if you've bothered to go and get it, that means that, or sorry, if, if you've been awarded that, that means that you're something within your your specific industry. So if you're in the fitness business, what 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 fitness awards are out there? What fitness business awards are out there that make it worthwhile for you? If you're in um, dog training, what what does that do? Uh, if you're in accounting, what are the accounting awards? Um, you know, here I think you've got, I think you've got the same thing. You've got the chartered accountants, you know is being a chartered accountant important to what you do if it isn't you might want to talk about why it's not important because everyone else is telling them that chartered accountants are important but yeah you know, what is it what, what 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 is specific to your business that will make you stand out within your niche within your industry as well as just being a, a just just i hate that word um being an award-winning uh business can you be a specifically award-winning business? That's well, all, that all the awards are based on industry, actually. So I actually, it, it's the same concept. It, it, if you look up awards, they are based on your industry. There's no such thing as just a generic yeah. business award. Like if um, oh, there, there are here, yeah, no, there oh, are here. here in Australia. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking. There's the Telstra Business Award. So there's the Telstra. Um, Telstra is one of our major um telecommunications company. There's the Telstra Small Business Awards and the Telstra Business uh, Awards and the Telstra the Women in Business ones. Awards. Okay. Um, and it throws. Yeah, you, know, you just throw everyone into that pot, and yeah, you know, to win it is, is is amazing. It's good. Um, but I also like to look at what is specific to your industry and specific to um, your credentials in that in that industry because that's that's as important as well. Um, like one of my mates just won a hosting business award within um, I can't think who it is because I saw it go through and I'm like that's really cool. They're doing really well. I'm so proud. Of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and and it's a big thing. They're making things happen that's within their industry it says that they're one of the best in what they do not just a good business and not just a well-run business but they're a good business in what they specifically do mm -hmm. so yeah okay so i'll take that in board that there are specific ones <laughs> um but also don't, don't just fall into the habit of yeah well i'm just going to apply for or the um, local council business awards or whatever that whatever comes up because we, we we do have a number of those here Okay, so um, what's the one thing that you'd like people to take away with them from our conversation today? Basically, I want them to know that it's possible to do this, to build your personal brand and make your, your own person like the face of the business and make it such that like everyone wants to work with you. Because I always wonder like, why do people wanna work with me for accounting? I don't have the accounting degree, I don't understand. And then I realized, oh, it's because I have a person, like my personal brand is very polished to the point where when people see it online, they're just like, she's the one, I trust her with my books, basically, <laughs> right? So it, it is possible, it's doable um, and go big or go home, right? Don't give up. Fantastic. So I, I really like it, go big or go home. Um, I think perseverance is gonna be one of the things that you need to throw in there too. Is I think you have a lot of tenacity. Um, now, just before I go on, I want to invite people to come and join my locals community. My locals community is uh, designed for business owners. Being a business owner can be tough. It can be uh, lonely and frustrating, particularly if we work remotely or you're a work at home person or you're a digital nomad like myself uh, and finding people that you can talk with, bounce things off of, get advice, say, hey, can someone check me on this? Am I just being stupid in the way I'm looking at this? Can be really, really tough because you can't go to the family and do it because the family doesn't understand, but other business owners may. So I've created my lo locals community, askcharlielatham.locals.com for business owners that is a bit like the old water cooler place at your office where you could go and stand 
stand around, grab a drink, have a cup of coffee, just talk about things and nut them out and work through them. I want you to treat that as a place where you not only get to interact with me, but you can get to interact with each other. You can join for free. Uh, and you can see all the content that I'm posting and uh, things that I don't share out on my other social media profiles go up there. And if you become a supporter, which is only $2 US per month, you'll be able to interact with that. You'll be able to make your own posts and you'll be helping me continue doing stuff like I'm doing today and bringing this great content to you. I hope you think it's great content. So come and join me at askcharlieleatham.locals.com. And back to us, Annie, now that I have done my spill there. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming along. Can you tell people how they can find out more about you? Um, can they work with you? Uh, do you provide advice? How, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself there. They can find me on AnnieYangFinancial.com. That's A-N-N-I-E-Y-A-N-G Financial.com. A lot of the advice that I've been giving today you know can also be found on youtube as well that's where i post almost five days a week about the little things that you can do to fix up your online branding and also make your make yourself seem like you're that industry expert fantastic so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put annie's um contact details in the show notes here um i'm assuming we can also connect with you on linkedin that's and right. i will get a link to annie's book um, that's on amazon is it annie I'll get a link to Annie's book and put that in the show notes as well so that you can get, get in touch with her if you found anything that you, you, you want to talk through. Um, I'd recommend having a good old chat to her because she's been fantastic and a great guest today. Um, I'm going to ask everyone to remember to like and subscribe the video. I always forget to do this. Like and subscribe the video. Sorry. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so that I can let you know when more content and making ones like that. Apart from that, thank you so much for being a guest. Um, we've done the one thing that I want you want to remember. So go big and go home. I think that was the statement. And we will see you all next time. Thank you for being a guest, Danny. Thank you, Charlie.